Hello again. This is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 1C, qualitative graphical analysis of velocity versus time and acceleration versus time. Now, now uh, very quickly we're going to uh, review the seven types of motion that we've looked at already. In position versus time, we have no motion plus CV, minus CV, plus plus A, plus minus A, minus plus A, and minus minus A. Now, we're going to be looking at velocity versus time graphs. We've looked at position versus time for each kind of motion. We now want to consider the same kinds of motion, but in terms of what the velocity versus time graph would look like. <coughs> There are some important differences between position and velocity graphs. It's critical when you look at a given graph, you're aware of which quantity is indicated on the vertical axis. It does make a difference, as you'll see. Now, one of the most important issues here is the meaning of the origin on these axes. Again, we have velocity on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. The point here on the horizontal axis where t equals zero, that means the same thing as it did before. It's the point in time <clears throat> when we're now interested in what the object is doing. Um, so we don't care what happened here. We just care about what happens from t equals zero to the right. The vertical axis, however, does not indicate the same thing as a position graph. It tells us what the velocity is at any time. <clears throat> So the point here on the vertical axis where v equals zero, this shows that the object at that position, that at that place on the graph is not moving. You can think of this axis here. In terms of the vertical axis, <coughs> think of the time axis as a stop line. This is where v equals zero. Now what we'll see here is that as you move away from this stop line, in either direction, you're moving faster. So if the graph moves <clears throat> away from the stop line above, it's moving faster to the right. And if it moves away from the stop line below, it's moving faster to the left. OK, at no time does the velocity graph, it, it, it never provides any information about where the object is at any time. Now, <clears throat> if the velocity graph appears in the top half of the axes that is up here, we conclude that the velocity is positive or to the right. If the graph appears down here in the bottom half, we would conclude that the velocity is negative or to the left. Now we'll look at each one in turn. No motion should be easy. If the object isn't moving, what is its velocity? We would conclude right away that it's zero. So the graph of the velocity versus time for no motion is a horizontal straight line on the time axis. It is, in fact, right here. Now, plus CV, constant velocity to the right. Now, the velocity is positive and constant. In other words, it doesn't change. We already know what a constant function looks like. We saw it in the position versus time graph for no motion when we had an object located to the right of the origin. This graph, although it looks the same, indicates constant velocity, not constant position. So qualitatively, again, we see that the graph is a horizontal straight line above the time axis. Because it's a velocity graph, the velocity is to the right, or positive and constant. And you can start to see why this can cause confusion, and you can see why it's very important to realize what is being graphed. Okay, this is a velocity graph, not a position graph, so it gives us different information. Now, when you look at these two, what's different about the two of them? <clears throat> Qualitatively, they're the same. They have a horizontal straight line above the time axis, 
We don't have any scales on the axes, but we can assume that the scales are the same. So what would you conclude about the magnitudes of the velocities of each object? The graph on the bottom here, the straight line is, is lower on the velocity axis. So it's closer to the time axis or closer to the stop line. We would conclude that the velocity of the object in this graph is less than the velocity in this graph. Okay, now constant velocity to the left. You can probably see this one coming. To the left means negative. We have another horizontal straight line, but instead of being above the time axis, it'll be below. Keep in mind that in either direction, closer to the time axis means slower, and farther away from the time axis means faster. So the magnitude of the velocity increases as you move away from the stop line. Now, moving to the accelerated motions, <clears throat> plus plus a to the right and speeding up. What does it mean the object is moving to the right? So we know that the graph has to be in the top half, has to be up here, above the time axis. It's speeding up, so it's getting faster. So it's got to be moving away from the time axis. The graph has to go up and to the right above the time axis. Okay. Now, again, you'll notice similarity between this graph and the plus CV position graph. They look the same, but since this is a velocity versus time graph, it shows that something else is increasing at a constant rate. <clears throat> In this case, the velocity is increasing. We're going to see a little later. The slope of the line is associated with the magnitude of the acceleration. And the slope here is positive, as is the acceleration. Okay? We could start the graph somewhere other than v equals zero, but it's got to be on the positive side. If it's below the time axis, it's going to mean something different. So make a note. Now, to the right and slowing down, similar reasoning <clears throat> to plus plus a. The object is moving to the right, so the velocity graph must be above the time axis, but it's slowing down, so the graph should approach the stop line, okay, from above. Recall that the acceleration points to the left because the object is moving to the right and slowing down. This line has a negative slope, and therefore the object has a negative acceleration. The graph does not actually touch the time axis. If it did, at that point, the object would actually stop. Now, to the left and speeding up, again, we have similar rationale, but the object is moving to the left, so the graph has to be below the time axis here. The graph's got to go down and to the right. It's got to move away from the time axis because the velocity is increasing, but it's increasing in a negative sense to the left. <clears throat> Note that there is a similarity between plus minus a and minus plus a. Both graphs show a line that goes down and to the right, but in the case of plus plus a, or plus minus a, I'm sorry, it's above the time axis. In the case of minus plus a, it's below the time axis. It is a critical difference in the type of motion. Okay, minus minus a, as we're familiar with from our position graphs, this is the toughest one. The object is moving to the left, so we know the graph has to be below. It's slowing down, so it's got to approach the time axis from underneath. Okay, what makes the graph difficult? is that the acceleration itself is positive. All right, people seem to have the most trouble with this one, particularly with the velocity versus time graph. <clears throat> Keep in mind that when you compare these two graphs, the plus plus a graph is above, the minus minus a is below. Okay, it's got a negative velocity that's approaching zero from underneath. They both have positive acceleration, but 
This one's moving to the right and speeding up. This one's moving to the left and slowing down. Okay, one other way to recall the sign of the acceleration for a given motion <clears throat> is to look at the combination of the two signs. If you multiply them, think about what the signs would do to the number itself. Okay, if the signs are alike and they're multiplied, the answer would be positive. Minus or positive times a positive, negative times a negative, in both cases positive acceleration. If the signs are unlike, plus minus a, minus plus a, we would have a negative acceleration and um, it's one easy way to keep them straight. Okay, so to summarize our velocity graphs for no motion we have a straight line here right on the time axis plus CV horizontal straight line above minus CV horizontal straight line below plus plus A we have a straight line that goes up and to the right above the time axis plus minus A a line that straight line that goes down and to the right above the time axis minus plus A down and to the right below the time axis minus minus A up and to the right below the time axis. Again you can memorize these or you can think about what they mean. Okay now we're going to take a quick look at the acceleration versus time graphs <coughs> for the various types of motion. The good news is that there are fewer options here. Again this graph doesn't tell us anything about where it is or how fast it's moving. It just tells us what the acceleration is at any time. Right? We're going to make a major assumption. For a given interval of motion, we're going to assume that the acceleration is constant. Okay, this greatly simplifies the mathematics, at least until you take AP Physics C next year if that's uh, in the cards for you. Now, for the first three types of motion where there's no acceleration, no motion plus CV minus CV, the graph is a horizontal straight line at A equals zero, right here. In other words, there is no acceleration, so A equals zero. For plus plus A and minus minus A, we know the acceleration is positive, so the acceleration versus time graph would be a horizontal straight line above the time axis like this. For plus minus A and minus plus A, acceleration is negative, so the acceleration versus time graph would be a horizontal straight line below the time axis. There's only three options. All right. Now, we're going to summarize all of our qualitative graphical analysis. Here are the three graphs, x versus t, v versus t, a versus t, for no motion, plus CV and minus CV. And you can see all three of the non-accelerated motions there. Here are the accelerated motions, plus plus A, plus minus A, minus plus A, minus minus A. And again, position, velocity, and acceleration moving left to right. Once again, you can memorize them all, or you can think about what each one means knowing what each one means and what it's actually showing you is a better way to approach these. Alright, we're going to wrap it up. That is all. Until next time, see you again.